Hello, Jebba Edmonds, your host with the Cultural Curriculum Chat, and I am so glad that you are here with me today. Now, my question to you is, did you know that you can use your art in order to promote social consciousness and highlight the injustice of people? Well, you can. And one of the artists I want to feature to you today in our book review, The People's Painter, how Ben Sean fought for justice with art. This is a wonderful biography by Cynthia Levinson and illustrated by Evan Turk. It talks about the life of Ben Sean. The first page took my breath away. It says, and I quote, the first thing I remember, Ben said, I drew. You can tell that Ben's passion was always in art and always drawing. The book starts with his life, living in Lithuania, living with his mother, his grandfather, his dad, and his siblings. And he talks about how scarce paper was, how he wrote in the pages of the Torah. And he lived in a small Jewish town in Eastern Europe. It was uh, pronounced Shetetl. And I love how this book has Yiddish words Yiddish is a language based on German, and it incorporates both Hebrew and Slavic words. This is the author's note in the beginning of the book. And it has the glossary and the pronunciation guide. It really shows you um, the multilinguistic words in the book to help you understand Ben's feelings at the time of his life also showed that he didn't even know that he was a social justice activist in his upbringing growing up. He just knew that he wanted to stand up for what is right and not give up and give way or, like he says, tattle on others in order to punish the whole group of people. He talked about how he even read some Bible stories that made him so upset And he didn't like how people got hurt. He kept on saying, that's not right. And even him protesting with his teacher and saying that, why should we all be punished for something that they didn't do? And he was known to walk out of his classroom. He was known to question authority. There was a time in the book where his father was hauled away because his father believed in equal and fair compensation for his work. And uh, it was under the ruling of Tsar Nikola II and how the officers came in and banished him to Siberia. And seeing the paint in the pictures that Evan helped portray of what pain and, and fear that they felt. But here you go, small Ben comes out upset again, enraged and says... And I quote, down with the czar. And that soldier heard him and started chasing him. He didn't catch him. And I felt like that was the catalyst in Ben's life to speak up to the masses of what is wrong and the injustices that has, you know, crippled a lot of people, especially in the Jewish communities at that time but also looking for that voice of others that have been marginalized, disenfranchised, and hurt and oppressed. Um, It talks about him being an immigrant at a young age at eight years old, when he left with his brother and sister and his mom, and feeling awful leaving his grandfather behind because his grandfather said that's all that he knew was that country. 
And that part of the story really got me choked up because being an immigrant myself and leaving my grandparents behind in starting a new life in the United States with my parents. I remember my grandparents when they would come and visit us in America and I would beg them, please just live here, just be with us all the time. You know, our, our time with them was so short and sporadic when they would come visit. And they saying this to me as a little girl, that's all that we know, Liberia, that's all that we know, that's our home. And having to accept it, even though you didn't want to. I was taken aback by that because it does remember in this page where Ben um, said as a stagecoach pulled away, he had to let go of his grandfather's hand and he started wailing. And I just remember that feeling of just being so heartbroken. Of, oh. There's just all things that your students can relate to and resonate with feeling othered, of feeling by speaking up and using your courage, you might have to run. <laughs> you might have to run fast. You might have to escape from some things in you know your life for a better one. It also talks about the realities of being an immigrant, you know, and immigrants now in your classroom can relate to being bullied like Ben was. They can relate to having different names or speaking with an accent like Ben says in the book. And also some foods that you aren't used to. There's so many great parts of this book and how the bullies pause when they would watch him draw on the sidewalk. How his teachers at the time would give him and gift him paints and letters to write in English. And they loved and praised his calligraphy. And unfortunately, another time in his life, his dad lost his job, so he had to quit school at 14 to work and working um, with a lithographer, having the students understand what a lithographer was and the printing press and how he worked and went home and, and provided for his family, but also trying to go to art school at night and how he just didn't feel like landscapes and shadows, like he said, were perfect portraits. But they weren't perfect. You know, life is imperfect. He wanted to tell stories of those that were oppressed and those that were hurt and persecuted. And it wasn't in, like he said, cows and in pastures. He wanted to show the real scope and in, in history of people that isn't always pretty. And him touring places and museums, going to Africa and Europe, and just, this may be art, but is it my own art? End quote. That's what he was thinking of. But going back to looking into the court system, he started by going through this process of two Italian-American men wrongfully accused of a crime and painting those stories of that and showing that to as many people that could see the ugliness of injustice that infuriated him and made him angry. And so he returned home to share those stories and people came to see him in droves. They wanted to see more of the story and he painted stories about, he said, working people, prisoners, Jews that had been mistreated just like his father, and also, the U.S. government took hold and hired him. It was during the Great Depression. So by the tutelage of President Franklin D. Roosevelt, who wanted Americans to see the poor and the oppressed and how the government needed to step up and give a helping hand. So he traveled across the country and he borrowed, I thought was really cool because with painting, it takes time to create your art on your canvas. He found a camera. He borrowed a camera from someone and was able to take pictures of life in pictures and then bring those pictures home and create those murals and those stories on his work, on his canvas. This was a way to urge people in government to pass the laws to make sure people had jobs, families were taken care of, and kids would go to school. 
He was even hired to work in a mural in a new village called Jersey Homesteads, trying to get this movement of Jewish people that were in tenements in New York City out into New Jersey where there was more land. So he painted this beautiful mural showing immigrants coming to the United States and how they worked hard and they're demanding for fair and equal pay and then settling happily into this new new settlement of homes for them. And just seeing that in that village uh, that he helped create for his community and still to this day to see that and his children would walk past it on their way to school. He was so defiant in saying that things were the way that they should have been. He was defiant in allowing those things to continue to happen by the use of his art, by the use of his voice and speaking up. In our social justice and education series in this podcast, this is what I want you educators to do is to showcase examples of what social justice means in education. And with that in his art and others like him in the artist world, they called it social realism. According to the art story, social realism is a political movement that artistic explorations during the time frame of the 1920s and the 1930s, during around the global economic depression. And it was a figurative and realistic way of showcasing to the masses labor unions were like the politically disenfranchised, the poor, empowering and amplifying the voiceless, the people that were the most marginalized. Ben Sean was also one of those. He was the megaphone before social media was a thing. He was that realist to show the society in America and throughout the world of what is wrong and the injustices that has been going on. I really have more information about Ben Sean in the description below. Please share his life and his accomplishments with your students. And also, why don't you do an art block with his works and see and have your students look at it and, and interpret it and also challenge them to think about the first thing that they remember and have them draw it. I love that, how he talks about his first memories in his home. And there's also another teaser that even the FBI came in and confronted him at one point in the story. So your students can understand of how he even stood up to the government by using his voice as well as his art. This book should be shared not only in your art classes, but also in your own classrooms. The People's Painter, How Ben Sean Fought for Justice with Art, written by Cynthia Levinson and illustrated by Evan Turk. You can purchase this book wherever books are sold. Take care of yourselves. And I cannot wait to share with you more titles this year on the Cultural Curriculum Chat. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.